Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. It's me, Candace the Aries, coming to you guys today with the story time of when I was in a verbally abusive relationship for three years. It was rough, y'all. Okay, you guys, so um, first things first, I want to apologize for my absence. A lot has been going on. I'll definitely will be um, doing a video about that a little bit later on. So let's get right into it. Um, so I met this guy through a friend of mine, a former best friend of mine. Um, I was in my early 20s. Um, we hit it off like right away. Um, she had a boyfriend and her boyfriend knew this guy and he's like, oh man, you know, I know a guy, he'll be perfect for you or whatever. So, you know, we met up and he was like, we hit it right off the bat. Like it was fantastic. Um, he was like my first, like legit boyfriend um did everything that i would expect a boyfriend to do like the thankless things the thoughtless things like the thoughtful things like flowers for no reason um i was in college at the time um downtown in downtown chicago school was starting up he bought me like book bag um he bought me like a book bag he bought me school supplies and things like that um jewelry any there was nothing that i wanted for and there was nothing that I could have even hinted at that he was like that's too much for him to do so um needless to say like everything was great like he treated me really really well um aside from all of the gifts and everything like that like he was very respectful he treated me very well um my family liked him my parents um approved of him and everything like that which was like a really big thing because that had never happened before so um we were together for maybe about six months before we both told each other we loved each other like it was really really quick i fell really really hard for him and um the feeling was mutual so um we ended up moving in together at about the maybe like the one year mark i feel like once we were like a solid year we ended up um, moving in together so um at first everything was cool when we first moved in together it was like you know regular the first time you move in you know you're really excited really happy to be sharing a space with somebody that you love <clears throat> and um maybe at about the one year maybe like three month mark um he started like doing little things and now when I look back on it I'm like how could you not have known but it's one of those things where like when you don't know you don't know so um in our apartment we had a front door and a back door and the type of lock that we had is the lock had a key I guess you got like a deadbolt or something I'm not sure of the correct verbiage but if you took the key out the lock and then locked it from the outside of you know the apartment you couldn't open the door like you needed that key in that lock to be able to unlock the door to get out of the apartment. So um, he would start locking me in the apartment. Like if I didn't have work, um, he worked nights and I worked morning. So um, when I would get off work, he would um, leave for work and he would lock me in the apartment. He would lock the back door and the front door. Mind you, you know, I didn't really think anything about it because I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. So it's like, you know, what's the big deal? Um, when I thought back on it, I'm like, what if the apartment would have caught on fire? I would have had to jump from the third floor. And really, it was more like the fourth floor because on the main level, it was a restaurant. So the restaurant actually took up the first floor. And then there were three um, units, like three levels above that. So I really was like legit, like on the fourth floor. So um, that started happening. And I didn't really think anything of it. The days that I didn't have work, um, he would leave out early and then he would lock me in the apartment. Like he still worked nights, but he um, would take the bus to work. And so this is a time where I didn't have a car and he would um, lock me in the apartment when he went to work. So I'll be in the apartment all night, but it didn't matter because I would, would go to sleep. So that happened for a little while. And then he started, um, I only had two friends. Um, my best friend that I've been friends with since sixth grade. And then the, the woman who had the boyfriend that introduced me to this man in the first place. So um, he started growing um, issues with me communicating with her. Like he would say things like, you know, I don't really like you talking to her. Um, she doesn't seem like she's really faithful to her guy. And I don't really want you around people like that. And I'm like, but this is my friend. So, you know, 
point blank period like I'm not about to stop being friends with my friend and then with my male friend my male best friend that I was friends with since sixth grade he started growing issues with him like you know you're so close to him did you guys ever have sex and I'm like oh my god no mind you I've been friends with this man since sixth grade we've never kissed um, I could count on my hands how many times we've actually hugged. I can't tell you what the inside of his palm feels like. Like we've never held hands. I can't tell you what his arm skin, like the skin on his arms feel like. like we've never, it, it's always been a completely platonic relationship between him and I. So he started growing issues with me um, communicating with him, like with telling me like uh, he felt like I was cheating with him and things like that. And I'm like, I would never like, I would never cheat on you. Like, I love you. Like, why would you think I would cheat on you? Like, I've never given you any reason to think that I would cheat on you. So I started to find myself like sneaking and talking to my friends. So like when he would go to work and things like that, like I would talk to them um, when he was at work or I would call them when he... Um, when I was on my way to work before I got a car, like I would just, you know, sneak and talk to them. My friends, like I would have to sneak and talk to my friends. So that started happening along with the doors being locked. Um, and then um, after that, what started to happen was he would grow like jealous concerns about things like, so like I normally a lot of times I would get off work at like 10 o'clock I was a pharmacy tech at the time that my job was maybe like about 15 minutes from the house on the bus so like if I got off work at 10 o'clock say I took the 10 15 bus if I got to the bus stop because he would always meet me on the other end of the bus stop um, where I would get off at and he would walk me back to the house like the house would be like five blocks away from the bus stop if I um got off the bus at like 10 32 like no exaggeration it was an argument and not only was it is what not only was it an argument but what he would do is um he would do the one thing that I hate and I don't like that public stuff like don't try to reprimand me in public don't try to argue with me in public don't try to yell at me in, I don't like that public stuff like don't if, if I tell you something then that's different but don't try to put my business out and like outside don't try to yell at me just don't argue with me like I don't like the public I just don't like it so on the way home he would be yelling and screaming oh I know you were cheating with somebody that's the reason why you were late getting off the bus you're nothing but a b you're nothing but a hoe you're a cheater and I know you're cheating on me and he would just yell at me like the whole five blocks all the way to the house all the way up the stairs, all the way in the apartment. Like that's like, that was a normal thing that he would do so much so that because we lived in the neighborhood for so long, like the people in the neighborhood were just like, that's just what they do. You know, she got off the bus late and that's just what he does when she gets off the bus late. So mind you, the only thing I ever did was go to work and come home because I, there was no room for me to do anything with my friends or anything like that because he pretty much made me stop being friends with my friends or I allowed him to make me feel like I needed to hide being friends with my friends. So um, that was another thing that started happening. And once that started happening, he would do things like he would, we would get in arguments and I'm big on astrology now, not like huge on astrology, but I believe in astrology. Um, and he's a Scorpio, he was, yeah, he's still a Scorpio, of course, because he's still alive and I'm an Aries. So um, if anybody knows anything about like astrology and things like that, with a Scorpio and the Aries, it's either going to be good or it's going to be bad. So um, with him, it was good, but I kind of feel like it was always bad. That good was just like a facade to get me into that mental space. So um, we would get in arguments because he would say I was cheating on him when I wasn't cheating on him. And I would be like, where's the proof? He's like, give me your phone. I'm like, here's the phone. You don't even let me talk to anybody. So how could I possibly be cheating on you? And so um, he would trash the apartment. Like when I say trash the apartment, I mean trash the apartment. Like I'm talking break all the dishes, like no exaggeration, like not a bowl left, not a plate left not a saucer left everything would be broken he broke tvs he broke tables punched holes in walls punched holes in doors we were forever painting because of damages that he um did to the apartment so 
that happened so frequently that it sadly it became something that was just like normal for me i'm just like okay whatever and i would just get up in the morning and on my way to the shower i would just make sure that i walked you know cautiously so that i didn't step on any glass or anything like that because it was just something that would happen like so frequently um so once that started happening that's like we we were probably at the two-year mark by this point so we were heavy into the arguing because he always would accuse me of cheating um he had a good relationship with my parents and so one thing that he would do um to kind of manipulate them which worked a thousand percent is when me and him would have arguments he would like secretly write i didn't even find this to find out about this so like years later after we were done he would write letters to them um basically telling them how horrible of a person that i was and how much he loves me and how much um i'm just not you know willing to let him love me the way that you know i deserve to be loved and things like that and so um he would mail the letters to my parents and so they would read the letter so then when i would come to them and tell them like you know he's doing this and this and this they're like no he would never do that to you i could never see him doing that to you because of course when he was in front of them he portrayed himself as a stand-up guy he's like you know hey let me help you with this oh no i'll mow the lawn oh no i'll do this oh let me hand wash your car let me do this or do that let me help around the house and so they were like oh my god he's so fantastic let me take a sip of tea you guys so that's how he would like manipulate them into believing that like I was the horrible person in the situation when it was actually him. So um, that started. And again, I didn't know about the letters until like me and him were like done. So um, after he would like trash the apartments and, and the apartment and things like that, like he would like go into the hallway and like if he was upset with me over anything, it could be nothing like he would literally just get upset and just like if he thought that I was cheating about uh, on him or if he would think about me cheating on him, he would like trash the apartment and he would like go into the hallway and start yelling at me. Like because he knew again, I didn't like that public stuff and then everybody would come out of the apartment like, you know, are you guys okay? He's like, yeah, I'm okay. You know, this B, she just nothing but a cheating hoe. And, I, and I'm like, I'm not even cheating on you. Like, which is, I think that's a big reason why um, the B word, like it literally holds no weight to me like for me it's just be, I heard it so much from him it's like it's one of those things where you legit like go numb from it and it's just like whatever it's just like whatever to me it was as common as my name like calling me Candace like that was just how much how frequently the word was used towards me by him so um that went on for a while and then like he one time he trashed the whole apartment and he I woke up to him at the foot of the bed crying like I don't know what time he had got home from work it was very early in the morning I knew I had to get up in a little bit and go to work so he tore the whole apartment up I woke up because he was trashing the bedroom that I was in sleeping so I wake up to um just clothes being thrown out um of the closet onto the floor he's mumbling things under his breath and I'm like you know like what is going on like we had a great night last night like we finally have not argued for like three days straight which was a record and he told me I kid you guys not he told me um that as he was sitting at the foot of the bed he told me that he had a dream I don't know when he had this dream, but he told me that he had a dream that a lady on the back of the bus told him that I was cheating on him and he trashed the apartment like he trashed the entire apartment. If I could, I can't even tell you like in a two week period, how many times dishes had to be replaced. Like it got to the point as to where... I was like, just, you know, you want to just get them from the dollar store because you're not going to do anything, but just break them anyway. So it's like, it doesn't even make sense to like invest in it. So he would trash the apartment. 
and then he would um cry about it we would argue about it then he would apologize about it and then he would replace it that was how that was just the how everything worked and that was like the norm i'm like okay all you're gonna do you're gonna trash the whole apartment we're just gonna cry about it then we're gonna make up and then you're gonna replace it um i would go and i would talk to my parents about like what was happening and they absolutely did not believe anything that i said to them he had completely um won their trust like a hundred percent and it was and it is beyond heartbreaking beyond devastating because it got to a point where they were like well you know candace like you do have a smart mouth and you do say things like this and you do do this and you do do that and it's just like like but i'm not doing anything like i'm i like i don't argue i don't try to argue with him i don't try to pick fights with him i don't do anything like that because he's always the one that starts it like he's always the one that's accusing me of cheating and i'm not cheating like i was legit not cheating like i did even if i wanted to cheat there was no space for me to cheat because he was locking me in the freaking apartments but they didn't believe me they didn't believe they were just like you know i can't see him doing that he just doesn't seem like the type of person that would do that and that was like heartbreaking for me you never know what a person of what a person is capable of until they actually do it like he was a gentleman in public but in private he was a monster like he was a monster and it was gradual before he actually got to like that full-fledged monster mode um another thing that happened was one on one day he was like you know hey um you know let's go downtown i want to take you downtown i'm like okay so um we took the bus downtown i had a car but i was just like who's trying to pay um downtown chicago parking prices not i so we took the bus downtown. Um, we had been having like a good week, having really, we weren't really arguing or anything like that. And um, he waited like when we got off of the bus, like as soon as we got off the bus and the bus pulled away, he started cursing me out and accusing me of cheating, accusing me of looking at guys on the bus, which I was not doing because I already knew that if I even kind of sort of made eye contact with anybody on accident, it was gonna be a problem. So he called me all kind of bees and holes and cheaters outside downtown in the afternoon in front of everybody. Everybody's on lunch break and all of this stuff. And I was so furious with him. I'm like, you literally waited until we got downtown to do this. Like you legit waited until we got downtown for you to like curse me out and call me out my name and say all of these horrible things to me. And so I'm like trying to walk down the street and act like I don't know who he is. He's like right on my neck, like screaming and hollering, like all in my ear, calling me out my name and just all of this stuff. And I'm just like, like, how did I get to this place? Like, how did I get to this point with this man that like, this is what he does. Like he knew that I didn't like the public stuff and he always made a way to do public stuff. So um, at about the two and a half year mark, I was like so depressed. I was just so just, I was broken like into bits and pieces. I felt like this was something that I caused. I felt like the whole relationship, the woes of the relationship was my fault. I felt like um, nobody believed me and nobody cared to help it was just always one of those things like when i would talk to my parents about it they're like well you need to go to him and you need to work it out and i'm like it's there's nothing to work out like this man is crazy and then he would come to them crying like i love her so much and it's just like it was crazy like he would tell me things like i love you more than i love my kids which is the most ridiculous and horrible like the most horrible thing to to confess to anybody like I don't even know how you could possibly care about anybody um, or anything more than your children. And he loved his kids. So um, at about the two and a half year mark, I was pretty much done. Like I was broken. I just, I had nothing left. I had no more fight in me. 
And the only thing I could think to do was leave. I knew that he would not leave. So my my mind, I'm like, well, I need to leave. He would purposely do um, double shifts when I didn't have to work. So like, even if they would call me into work, I would have to make up an excuse as to why I could never like come into work when somebody called off because I didn't want to tell them like, you know, my boyfriend locked me in a house and I can't get out the house because that it just it sounds it's just horrible so i would make excuses and so the days that i would have off days like he would tell me write down my off days like i would have to take a picture of the schedule so that he would know like those are legit my off days and he would um do double shifts on those days so like when i was like super fed up and i was just like okay you know what i'm leaving and i looked for an apartment and things like that because i'm just like i just have to go like i remember like sitting in the room and just completely like sobbing and just feeling so alone and so lost and just in my mind like trying to figure out like how did I get myself into this like how can I make my parents understand like that it's not me like that it's him and that he's making up these grandiose ideas of like what I'm doing when I'm not doing anything and I remember there was a bible in the room and I remember like sitting on the in the bed and I like took a pen and I wrote like I hate and with his name like all the way around the bible like the outside of the bible like on the pages and I just remember like that made me feel better and then when I looked at it and I noticed that I wrote I hate and you know his name all the way around the bible I was like I gotta go so started looking for apartments and things like that and um I found an apartment so like by this time I had told my mom like you know what I'm done I'm just out of here my mom was like okay well whatever you know you just don't want to try when I'm like okay whatever I've been here for almost three years and I'm done should have left when he first started locking me in the house but you know it's again it's one of those things like when you don't know you don't know Hey you guys, so the video was running long, so I decided to break it up into two parts. Check out part two, please.